In this lesson, we're going to start looking at macros in Excel. Unlike earlier versions of Excel, where the macro options will be available on an existing toolbar or menu, with Excel 2010, you need to add in the macro options. And to do that, I just right click on a toolbar, any toolbar will do, choose Customize the Ribbon, and make sure you have main tabs in the Customize the Ribbon drop down. And what you're looking for is the Developer tab there. So just make sure there's a check next to Developer, click OK, and you will have this new tab available. And if I click on that, you will see on the left hand side the code section containing all the macro options that you need. If you've never used a macro before, then all it basically is is a recording of things that you do using a mouse or keyboard. And like many things, it makes more sense if you actually see me go through the process of recording a macro. So I'm going to click on Record Macro. And if I just bring that dialog across, you'll see we can give it a name. And I'm going to call this one First Macro. And the next thing you can do is give the macro a keyboard shortcut. Now you have to be careful here because obviously there are many existing keyboard shortcuts such as Control C for copy, Control V for paste, and so on. So you have to find something that you'll remember and that also isn't an existing Excel shortcut. So I'm going to choose Control and Q. We'll see later in the lesson that there are other ways of running a macro, so don't worry that you'll run out of keyboard shortcuts. Next we have options of where to store the macro, and just for now I'm going to leave it as this workbook. And finally, I do have the option of creating a description that will obviously describe what the macro does. And so I might just choose here to say that it enters the business name. Because for this first example, I'm simply going to have the macro type out the name Fred's Video Classics. So I've entered all the information I need for my macro. Simply click OK. And uh, ah, right, OK, so what we have is an error message there telling me that the name that I've entered is not valid. And this is something that you do need to watch out for. The first one here might be my problem. As it says, the name does not begin with a letter or an underscore. And indeed, my macro name begins with the number one, so that's my problem. And if ever you see this message, simply click OK and just go back and fix the name. So I will instead call it Fred's Macro. And then click OK. So right now we're recording a macro, and there are two indicators that will tell you that you're recording a macro. One of them is down at the bottom left of the sheet window and you'll see a small square, and that square indicates that you're recording a macro, and if you click on that, you will stop the recording. And at the top left in the code section, there's also a stop recording button, which obviously wouldn't appear if you weren't recording, so that indicates that we are currently creating a macro. Now there's no time limit on creating a macro, so I could, if I want to now, go shopping, come back home, have lunch, and then record a macro. That wouldn't be realistic, but just to let you know that there's no panic, you don't have to rush to create the macro, um, so you can think about your next action as you record. But all I need to do here is type my title, which is going to be Fred's Video Classics. Oh, and by the way, I can make as many typos as I want and undo. All of those actions will be recorded, but as long as I end up with the title that I want at the end, that's fine. Press Enter. That's my macro. So let's click Stop Recording, and you'll notice the Stop Recording button switches to Record Macro, telling us that we have stopped, and the button at the bottom left has changed to a different square with a red blob. And so if I click on this now, I will start recording another macro, or defining another macro. So the next thing we need to do is test the macro, run the macro, and what I'm going to do is go back to cell A1 and just press Delete. And you'll remember that my keyboard shortcut is Control and Q. So let's try that, Control and Q, and there we are. That's a very simple example of how you create and run a macro. I'm going to save the workbook now with the macro, but before I do that, I'm just going to delete the name from A1. So when it opens, I'll just have a blank workbook. Press the F12 key for Save As. I'll give it the file name Fred's Macro Test. And in the file type, what I need to do here is click on the drop down and choose Macro Enabled Workbook so that my macro will work. Choose Save. And now if I close that down, type Control O for Open. 
there's the macro test file so just click on that click open now the first thing I see here is a warning a security warning and this is very important that if you don't know where the workbook you've opened came from you have to question whether you trust the content or not if you don't trust the content don't enable the macros until you've established where it came from and if it's a trusted source obviously in this case the source is me so I trust myself and I simply click enable content and when I create a new workbook with a Fred's video classics example I no longer have the strain of typing out the whole title I can simply type control and Q if you want to remove macros all you need to do is go back to the developer tab come to the code section and click the large macros button when you do that you get the list of all the macros contained in the workbook and in fact down here we have the options to look at macros in all open workbooks or just this particular workbook and I do have the option here of selecting the macro and deleting it or if I click on the options button I can modify it so I could change the keyboard shortcut and I can also modify the description here if I want to I'll click cancel for now and they won't make any changes on the macro box there there is also a keyboard shortcut that will bring up that list of macros which is alt f8 so that does the same thing and of course escape will just cancel that dialogue so now we've seen the basics of recording and working with macros let's go on and produce something a little bit more sophisticated here we have a data table that you may have seen from earlier lessons and in row 4 you'll see there's some new text and we have a row label that says actions and then we have a series of actions that I'm going to create as macros so the first one is sort the table by movie the second one is sort the table by month the third is subtotal on the movie column and the fourth is subtotal on the area column and at the end there you see we have the word reset so I'll need to create another macro that will return the table to its original form the first macro I'm going to record is sort by movie and the only thing I have to keep in mind is that I can't simply sort the column because one of my later actions will be subtotals I need to make sure that any subtotals are removed before applying the sort and you'll see how that works when I create the macro so let's come down to the bottom left there we have our record macro button so if I just click on that we begin recording and I'm just going to call this one sort movie I won't be entering a shortcut and I'm just going to keep it stored in this workbook and I won't bother with the description either because the title is self-explanatory I think so let's click OK I'm going to click on the data tab just make sure I'm clicked in the table somewhere go to the subtotal button and just click on remove all and what that will do is remove any subtotals that had been applied by these last two actions here so now I'm in the movie column and just simply click A to Z sort and that is done so I can click on the stop button and there's my first macro recorded I'm going to do the same thing for the month sort so again start recording click the record button we'll call this sort month again just click OK remember I need to remove any subtotals that have been applied so click the subtotal button first click remove all click into the month column this time it's a slightly more complicated sort and what I need to do here is go to the sort button change the sort by to screening month values is okay I can't do a simple A to Z sort though so I need to click on the drop down go to my custom lists and here's a custom sort list I made previously which runs from September through to March so I click OK click OK and there's my movies sorted by screening month click stop and my second macro has been recorded the next macro is to subtotal by movie so again just come down and click the record button there and we'll call the macro subtotal movie so with subtotal just make sure you're clicked in the table go to the subtotal button first of all remove any existing subtotal then I need to sort the list by the movie so click into column B the movies there A to Z sort then come back to the subtotal button and where it says at each change in we need to set that to movie the sum function is fine and total sale is what we want to subtotal on and just click OK and there we have our subtotal by movie so I can now stop that macro and that completes the recording of the third macro 
and finally subtotal on area so again click the record button and the name of this subtotal will be subtotal area just click OK and the first thing I need to do is just make sure all the other subtotals have been removed so we go to the subtotal option remove all that's the first action then we click in the area we sort A to Z we go back to subtotal choose as each change in and obviously make it area just scroll down there find area sum function and total sale as the subtotaled field are OK again just make sure replace current subtotals is also checked and click OK so there we have the subtotal for the area so again just stop that and the final thing to do of course is to create a macro to reset the table to its original form so I'm going to click the record button one more time we'll just call this one reset table click OK so click on the subtotal button and just choose remove all then go to the sale code column and sort that A to Z and that will indeed return the table to the way it was in the beginning so I can now stop that macro and just saw there in a relatively short space of time we've been able to create those five macros for the table the question now is how do we set them up so we can easily access those macros because I don't have any keyboard shortcuts well there's a couple of things I can do the first thing I'm going to do is create a toolbar with those macros on and to do that just right click in any existing toolbar and choose customize the ribbon and on the right side we're going to create a new tab so click the new tab button you may remember seeing this from the customization lesson so if I right click on new tab I can choose rename and I'm just going to call it macros and for the new group let's rename that I'm just going to call it table macros again just hit the enter key and over on the left hand side if I click on the drop down arrow for choose commands I'm going to choose macros and you can see there my five table macros I'll just click on the first one in the list which happens to be the last one I created the reset click add and just keep clicking add and you'll see there it goes through the list until I have my five table macros that's all I need to do there click OK if I go to my macro toolbar there we are there's the button so let's try them out so let's do a subtotal on the movie that seems to work fine let's sort on the movie list so you saw there how the subtotal was removed first and then the table was sorted let's click on subtotal area and finally let's see if it'll sort on the month correctly which it does so we start in September and go through to February and of course we can reset the table now by clicking the reset button another way you can run macros on a worksheet is by adding command buttons now if I go back to the developer tab here come down to the control section and what you need to do is click on the insert button and under form controls click the very first button there and now I can draw on the spreadsheet and I'm going to draw a button next to the reset cell there we go just draw that button as soon as I've drawn the button it comes up with macro name and I can now click on the reset button there and you can see the macro name updates to reset table all I need to do now is click OK at the moment it says button 2 so I can click inside the button and just delete that label and type reset and then just click away I don't need the reset cell now so I can click on that and delete that but now if I go back to my macros tab so let's click in the table and I'll run my subtotal area macro for example and then I can simply click the reset button like so so again sort by month and then reset and finally let's save this workbook so again just press F12 and remember of course I need to save it as an Excel macro enabled workbook just click on that click save so that concludes this first look at macros in Excel. You've seen how to add the developer tab, how to use the macro options to record a macro, have a keyboard shortcut for the macro, or alternatively put macros onto your own custom toolbar as we have here, and also how to place a button onto the worksheet and assign a macro to that button. So I hope you found some things in there that are useful and that you'll be able to apply to the workbooks that you're working on. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.